Kirk Shireman, the ISS program manager here in Baikonur. Kirk, it took a few extra weeks to get the Soyuz out to the pad, but here it is, and another crew ready to head to the International Space Station. Your thoughts on the rollout and the preparations uh, leading up to the start of this new increment? 
Parker. It's a beautiful day, a little brisk here in uh, in Baikonur, but it's uh, great to be here for the rollout. Uh, you know, it took a little extra time. We had a, an anomaly with the Soyuz, but the team was very thorough, understood what the issue was, and then performed all the retests. So we're all very confident that uh, that this vehicle is ready to go to safely take our crew to the International Space Station. And uh, it's been a very productive time on the ISS. We're looking forward to having these uh, these guys on board and, uh, and continuing that productivity. Bill Gerstenmeyer, NASA's Associate Administrator for Human Exploration. Bill, uh, about three weeks or so uh, behind schedule, but nonetheless, the Soyuz on the pad, ready to go, a new increment. Uh, how complicated was uh, this repair and the retesting to get everything back together again so quickly for the Soyuz? This was really a challenge for the Russian team to, to sort through this problem. At first discover where it was, it took a long time for them to methodically disconnect cables and, and look and figure out what was going on. Um, then when they, they found the problem, then they had to repair it, and it wasn't easy repairing it. You know, the vehicle was fully fueled, it had the pyrotechnics installed, so doing all that work was a lot of non-standard work for them. You know, I think it, this shows that, that the Russians are really focused on what they're doing to find this problem and then to take the time to repair it was really, really outstanding. You know, I often tell our teams to stay hungry and keep looking for problems. This is a real example of what that really means, that when you find something that isn't quite right, you take the time, you, you dig into it, you figure out what's wrong, then you go make the repairs. And, and what they've discovered is they're going to make some minor changes on some of the vehicles that are getting ready to be processed for the subsequent flights. So this was a really good thing. It was fortuitous. The problem stayed around, and they had a chance to, to work it, discover it. But they really, really did a great job of getting this vehicle ready to go fly. And just a tremendous... Uh, effort, tremendous professionalism. You know, they worked fairly expeditiously to get the vehicle ready and just, just really, I can't say enough of how diligent they are. I spent some time talking to them this morning and they went over all the reviews. They participated with us in a flight readiness review. Just a great effort on their part. And Bill, the, uh, the whole next six months or so for station activity and the science uh, associated with all of the work that these crew members have to do on orbit, uh, your thoughts on uh, are the crews overworked? Are, are they stepping up to the pace of the work? Uh, your thoughts on all that? Again, the, the crews are doing just a tremendous job. What, what's exciting is we've got some really quality research and science, some brand new stuff we've never done before, some DNA sequencing and activities along those lines and and Kate has just done a phenomenal job on orbit of working through those activities I think the crews get really excited by seeing new research that's in the fields that they've studied and they've participated in as be they became astronauts so the, it's I think a very busy time but I think an extremely rewarding time and I don't see the crews uh, being overworked or being stressed they're really rising up to this challenge so it's it's fun to watch our teams generically rise to these challenges and just continue to excel with space station the, the research results the activities on board station are really unprecedented and i think we need to step back occasionally and look at just what's occurring on station it is actually phenomenal if you look through the research that's being done and the activities that are occurring just a tremendous tremendous time in space chris cassidy nasa's chief astronaut uh, chris it took a little bit longer than had been planned but the soyuz is ready is Shane Kimbrough ready after all of this? Shane is absolutely ready. It, you know, it's really special for me to be here. We were astronaut classmates together in 2004, and to be here during this uh, pre-launch period with him and be with his family, uh, it's extra special for me on a personal personal level. But uh, I can tell you he is ready to go, that the crew as a whole is ready to go. Um, it's just the quarantine period is a really nice period to get through all of the training that you've got to at this point. Put that behind you, just relax, focus on what's ahead, and get ready for launch, and that's exactly where they are. You know, Shane and his crewmates were just days away from launch uh, before the problem was uh, detected on the Soyuz, uh, forcing uh, several weeks of repair work and retesting. From a psychological standpoint, how difficult was that, and how easy, frankly, was it uh, for Shane to slip right back into the training flow? Uh, fairly easy, but, you know, we, we, uh, we joke around in the, in the crew office that, Late launch, late launch delays are, not, are a blessing, really, in, in some ways, because you're, you're going like crazy, and then all of a sudden a, a, a late launch slip happens. It's not something that we, we desire. Nobody's in, uh, happy for it, but what it really does is extra time to brush up on things, 
professionally and also to, to uh, a little bit more time with the family. He was able to get back to the United States and, and uh, see his, his kids and hang out uh, in Houston a little bit and, and get a little bit more training and come right back effortlessly and seamlessly slide right back into the flow.